I started painting when I was around four years old. I used to sketch whatever captured my attention in the best way I could and fill it with colors. So here's an example. This is one of my oldest paintings. Here in this painting, you can see some women and children collecting water near a paddy field. I guess I made this when I was around four or five years old at my home near the paddy field in Kerala. I'm not being very critical here of myself, but when you look at this picture, you can see that a lot of things are off here. The perspective is lacking, the size of subject are not relative, the human figure in the painting is as big as the tree, number of fingers drawn is wrong in each hand, etc. etc. But though the picture lacks logic or rational, it conveys a story. A story of a four-year-old and his little reality. When we were kids, we used to draw things without worrying much about the outcome. We always tried to express the image in our mind more than anything else. Later on in life, as we grew up, we learned the rules of reality and tried to incorporate them in our art. We learned that there are five fingers in each hand, so we made sure to draw that. Then we learned there is something called perspective and relative size. We draw human figures in a certain height and dogs smaller just to make it look similar to what we see in real life. Slowly, people start to forget the fact that they can draw whatever they want, however they want, as rules of reality weigh them down. An onlooker could start comparing your drawing with an actual scene and come in. This is not right. And we get overly worried thinking that there is something wrong in the way we draw. Slowly, most of us forget our ability to create something out of imagination and constantly live in the fear of, is it good enough? As an artist, you can actually have the power to break these rules with imagination whenever you want. I'm going to show you a couple of my works which has no rational or rules, but it tries to convey a story. Breaking set rules, seamlessly merging to impossible scenarios Changing the meaning of object as we normally perceive them are the crux of these works. Four years back, I was down with the box. As you know, at those times, quarantining was required only if you had chicken box. So I was at home, alone, and feeling all blah, and bummed that I can't step out of my house for the next two to three weeks. My doctor had prescribed me some medicine, including some vitamin pills. They were quite cute and tiny and in muted colors. I took one in my hand. As I looked at it, I could imagine some stories around those pills. So I came up with this one first, a boy fishing. Here the two colors of the pills are used to show water levels. And in this one, vitamin pills are incorporated as scuba diving equipment. And here is the third one. I named it as vitamin barrier. She is the symbol of peace. And here's another one where the protagonist is bombing medicines. Yes, we need more medical care and zero war. And here is another one where the astronaut and his dog somehow got stuck in the Mars and were waiting for the spaceship to return. In all this illustration, I was trying to connect the pills with different scenarios, changing the meaning of object in, a, in my own way. Absolutely no rules here. I like to carry my sketchbook wherever I go. I love doodling and creating little artworks inspired from the places I travel. My whole idea is not to copy the place as it is, but sort of make a statement that I was here and this is how I perceived the place when I was here. Instead of replicating the place, I try to add my own little imagination to the reality. These stories might be inspired from the place, its culture, its architecture or history. By adding a little bit of imagination, we can look at these places in a different perspective. Talking about perspective, here's another story. A few days after my birthday celebration, I noticed that some of the birthday balloons were lying around in my living room. They had shrunk quite a bit by that time and were now tiny baby balloons. I was about to throw them out and clean my room, but was stopped by a thought. As I looked at them, I got an idea to use this balloon with my illustration in my sketchbook to create sort of 3D object-oriented art. It was a random thought, but really interesting to do as well as to see. In 2010, 
I created an illustration series named Unposted Letters. This series has been the most popular one out of all my artworks till date. When I started this series, I didn't want to create figurative characters, so I made these two simple stick figures and focus more on the concept rather than other details. The whole idea behind the series is to create situations that question reality and connect it with various emotions of love and life. I would imagine a scenario inspired by our ordinary world and try to give a twist to that reality by adding fantastical elements or magic to it. In literature, we call it magical realism. Another narrative technique that I use in this series is symbolism. In this series, the umbrella is not really an accessory, but it represents love or hope. Sometimes the protagonist loses the umbrella, which implies lost love. I mostly let my imagination run wild when it comes to art. It's not just in the daily doodles that I apply this principle. When it comes to a bigger project or brand collaborations, I execute it exactly in the same way but on a bigger scale. For example, I did a project for Port Museries, which is a boutique hotel by Marriott Group. I did the art curation for the entire hotel. The theme of this project was to create artwork inspired from Musri's era. Musri's was a port in Kerala that existed in BC. Due to floods, at that time, the sea shifted to a different location and Port Musri's eventually became non-existent. Hence, we do not have much information available about this port today. So, I took it as an opportunity to create my artwork and mix it with reality and imagination. I visualize this as a girl's dream who is living in current Kerala but knows about the story of the shifted sea. I titled this project Presence of an Invisible Sea, where the main protagonist dreams or visualizes the sea in her daily life. There are three life-sized artwork from this project. Few months ago, I had done a collaboration with Lamborghini for their art and photography project. I was required to create art inspired by the car with a connection to few of the cultural aspects of my native in Kerala. Here too, I let my imagination run wild and came up with the concept of overlapping different timelines, that is, merging the past and the future and capturing it in the present. What would happen if something from the future came to visit a very old mystic land from the past? That would alter the rules of their reality, right? I explored this interesting plot using photographs, films and artworks and titled it The Meeting Place. I concluded this project with an illustration that summarized the story of this strange meeting. So this is the illustration I made for the project. When you look at this final illustration, you can see some similarities with the old painting by my younger self. Remember the one I showed you guys in the beginning of this presentation where I had drawn characters without much perspective. In reality, both of these paintings depict exactly the same location near my home that surrounded by paddy fields. The only difference is that this time I deliberately made the four characters huge in this illustration to make it more impactful and more surreal. I had to deliberately break the rules of reality to tell my version of the story. As a four-year-old, I drew the woman as tall as the tree because I didn't know any better. Today, I draw it bigger to convey an element of surreality in my story. As years pass by, we believe we have grown and evolved and that everything around us has changed, but in reality, nothing has really changed. The child in you who drew little houses and sunset years ago is still alive, somewhere inside of you and will always be. You just have to pay attention to it, listen to it and try to break free from all these restrictions and preconceived rules spun around us. When you start doing this, you would be surprised at how easily new ideas flow into your mind. Art does not read a rule book. Come on, what's the fun in that? The idea is to create art the way we want to express it. The idea is to keep the creativity of that childlike mind inside you alive. Thank you.